In wine terms, we see the New World as the Southern Hemisphere and USA, effectively. And Canada, I should say, that would be New World as well. So the, the popular varieties in the New World, they tend to be the grapes that originally are of French origin. So in whites, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, maybe Chenin Blanc, and in reds, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, or Shiraz as it's known in Australia. So my, my favourite wines from this New World tour are, there's, there was one white that really stood out, a, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Marlborough, which is the, the, the best place for Sauvignon in New Zealand, which was just gorgeous. So that was, there was a couple of New Zealand whites, but this Sauvignon was delightful under the Outlook Bay label. And then there were a couple of Shirazes from Australia, and it's quite an exciting wine tour. There were, there, there were Shirazes from different parts of Australia, but the two from McLaren Vale and Clare Valley, which are known for their high quality Shiraz, were both really good, but in different, sty in different styles, which I like because they, they demonstrated the difference between those two areas. And then I should mention there was a lovely red from Chile as well, a, a Cabernet Franc, which is a lesser known Bordeaux grape, not as well known as Cabernet Sauvignon, but similar. With Sauvignon Blanc, I do really, I love um, goat's cheese, feta, uh, so feta salad, something like that, I find works beautifully with, with Sauvignon Blanc, wherever it's grown around the world. For Australian Shiraz, it's quite full-bodied, a bit peppery, a bit spicy. I think it works really well with duck, um, roast duck, something like that. It can also be really good with sort of winter stews, casseroles. Traditionally, Southern Hemisphere wines would be made from riper grapes. They'd have slightly higher alcohol levels and they'd have slightly lower acidity and they'd be a bit smoother on the palate. Whereas European wines would be slightly lower in alcohol, higher acidity, fresher. And because of that, because of that freshness, probably more food friendly. There are certain blends that are successful in the new world, which you wouldn't find in France. So for instance, in South Africa, I really like the blend of Chenin Blanc and Viognier, uh, which, and in fact, we have one of those in the current, with the New World Wine Tour. And in uh, Australia, it's quite common to blend Cabernet Sauvignon and Shiraz, but you'd never find that blend in France, for instance. So there are blends that are unique to the New World, if you want, and just, and winemakers have discovered that they work well in their climates and with their conditions. There are a couple of trends that I notice in New World wines. Uh, actually, there's probably three, I would say. Firstly, they're tending to move for higher quality wines. They're tending to move towards planting vineyards in cooler sites where you can have a longer growing season and that tends to lead to a bit more intensity of flavour and freshness in the resulting wines. Secondly, I think we're seeing more blends. Historically, we associate New Zealand uh, New World wines with single varietals, Cabernet, Shiraz, Chardonnay, Sauvignon, whatever, whereas now we're seeing more blends. And finally, we're seeing a bit more attention, if you want, to a more European model, where within individual countries and states, they're isolating certain areas or regions as being particularly good, either for wine production generally, or for specific grape varieties.